So even though we're talking about viscera one by one, and you'd normally go to different chapters in a book and different hallways in a hospital to deal with your heart or your lungs, as an integral anatomist, to me they are one beautiful, crazy, dramatic, impressive organ. It's like the heart is a beautiful angel inside your chest with wings that are inflating and, and, and expressing the motion of the heart as the blood circulates constantly your whole life back and forth between the two. So the heart and lungs, what is it? <laughs> like it's the locus in your body where your, where your blood refreshes its movement and is filled with nutrients and oxygen and prana even at, at this central location in your body. So there's a, the heart and the lungs are a place of, of exchange and movement refreshment. So we tend to think of the lungs as all about air, right? And it's true. We breathe in and the atmosphere rushes into our body. But the exchange that can happen between the air is happening with the blood, right? So the, so the, the little capillaries are surrounding the air sacs and the exchange of, of gases is happening at this interface in the most beautiful way that we can talk about in more detail later. But just to give you that sense that the lung isn't all about just the air, it's also about the blood, which is why it's the wings of the heart, right? Because it's the, the, the incredible infiltration of the lungs with, with vessels and little tiny capillaries that embrace those air sacs and create that exchange and make it possible. And then the lungs are also massaging the heart. So with every inhalation, there's a compression right, on the heart, and the heart just loves it. It's getting its little, little massage all day long. Now the heart itself is writhing in the center. It's always moving and beating in a very dynamically rhythmic way. It's not in a rut. It's not doing the same dance over and over again, right? It's rhythmically dancing inside your chest, and its spirillic contractions are literally spinning the blood into a vibrant vortex that carries that that nutritive element of the, of the oxygen and, and even the prana from your, uh, from your chest out to the rest of your body, right? So the heart is, some people, well, in the medical community, or if you go to a doctor's office and you see a picture of a heart on the wall, it'll say the heart is a pump. Well, I'm telling you, it doesn't actually work that way. And that could be something for a whole other video, but what I can tell you for certain is that, that the, the blood, as it slowly returns from the periphery and sort of drifts back from those pressure differentials being drawn back like a lazy river inside your chest, comes into your heart and is <laughs> spun again and revived in its movement and sent back out on its mission to nourish the whole body with the life-giving uh, elements carried by the blood. So. Uh, where is it? Okay, we're talking about the stuff inside your chest. Okay, now we tend to think of our chest as following the lines of our costal margin of the of the ribs, this bony element here. But it's really not like that. Actually, your abdominal organs come up quite high. So in the anterior view here, seeing me from the front, the lungs only come down to about to about here right? And then they fill in your sides and your back. So if you have your hands here, feeling the lower ribs, and then feeling your way up, and you put your hands here, your, your lungs are up here, and all the way to the apex. So much so that when you take a breath, and you put your hands at your lower part of your neck here, you can feel them filling even above your collarbone. Your lungs go that high. So think of 
the lungs as a side organ and a back organ filling in this whole channel here. And where's your heart? Take your right hand, put it right on your sternum centrally, and then just shift it over a little bit to the left. Okay? And your heart is living right there so that the, the, the far right side of your heart here, you put right on the line edge of your sternum, and your heart is right here. And how big? About as big as your fist. Sometimes bigger, sometimes smaller, just like all people, right? Are sometimes bigger and sometimes smaller. But that's a kind of a nice place to find your heart. Now, it's one thing to make a fist here and pretend it's your heart. But it's another thing to go into this place and you can feel it moving there. It's a powerful movement. It's a movement so powerful that if you sit very quietly and still and are balanced on your sits bones, your heart will actually rhythmically move your whole body. You can feel it rocking you from within. If you relax your musculoskeletal system and balance it, the heart's rhythm is powerful enough to create a sense of a rhythmic wave going through your body. That's a beautiful mantra or meditation in itself, to experience the movement of your heart moving you, to be moved by your heart. So neighbors, well, <laughs> heart, heart and lungs uh, living together here inside your chest, but most people don't realize that the heart <laughs> is, you see this little pathway I drew coming down here? That's one of the great vessels of your body the inferior vena cava. It's a vein that's draining everything, below, everything from below, and it passes right through your liver. So if I drew your liver right here, you'd see <laughs> that, the, that the, the heart and the liver have only intervening between them the diaphragm. So your heart actually is best friends with your liver, with that inferior vena cava plugging right behind your liver and so the movements of the liver with the lungs expanding the pulsations of the heart are a coordinated expression of the liver and the heart together so i'm just throwing that in so you don't think that the heart's all alone here with its lungs just living living there on its own in fact the other organs right are feeling <laughs> here's the stomach Right? Here's the liver. The liver is solid and the stomach is kind of hollow. Think of it as different types of drums. Right? And the heart is literally beating on those drums, creating a percussive communication with the organs around it. It's not playing solo, it's in a band. Okay? <laughs> and, and, the, and the song of the heart is, is being listened to by the other organs because of their immediate proximity to each other. We don't need to go check in with the brain if you're the liver. What's up with the heart right now? The heart is literally beating on you all day long like a friend who keeps tapping you on the shoulder and you just love it, okay? And if it starts to run, right? So say you're, say you're just like, ah, oh, this is the heart petting the liver. And then all of a sudden you're like, I'm going for my jog. Bump, 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 bump. Your liver knows. You're jogging. It doesn't need anyone else to tell it because it's listening to the changing rhythms of the heart. Same with your stomach. That's why you'll stop digesting when you go for a jog right after a meal, right? So um, what are the, the role? I think we talked about the role at the beginning, didn't we? A little bit. So the, the exchange, right? The, the, the beautiful exchange of, of nutritive elements from the blood both the discharge of gases that we don't need, the reception of gases that we do need, and the, the mixing, right, uh, and uh, of, the, of the food elements, right, that also come through here, right, and become you. Uh, so we have our heart um, refreshing the movement of the blood, enjoying the, um, the spinning and acceleration of movement, bringing life to your whole body, 
heart and lungs together. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to study more with me, go to gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.